and we're gonna donate the stuff, but not when you're in debt. And it's not the councilman before these, this council or the one before that. We're gonna go back 10 years, 12 years. When I moved into the city 32 years ago, I noticed things going wrong with, on the council. They were so far in debt and money was being spent left and right in so many lawsuits, I couldn't believe it. I came out of a city that never had lawsuits. And all of a sudden it's, I hear there's a lawsuit here, a lawsuit there. Couldn't understand why. So we're not gonna blame the last council or one before that. Let's start right from the beginning, the first group of people that were on there. This is where it all started. Mr. Witt? I might take a break before we have the response. <clears throat> Good evening. Let me first of all, before I get to my major points, let me respond to some things that have just been said. I need to point out to the mayor that I arrived about 15 minutes ago and the fact that that I wasn't signed up would, would have made no difference with respect to her determination that she, she was gonna grant five minutes. It's completely irrelevant. Uh, the folks Could, before you, uh, sir, there were several before that, that were here that didn't sign up. That's what I meant, that would have been the 15. And then we had two, so that's 17. Anyway, the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The other point, and this was not something I was gonna comment on, but it's totally absurd to suggest that it would not be highly likely, if not certain, that the council would charge with respect to anything that it would, quote, give to the library, grant to the library, transfer to the library. In fact, the council would be obligated because the library, uh, given the uh, contemplation of proposal one, would be a separate entity. Now, I wasn't here, but I understand that um, when the community center became the community center provided by the Board of Education, that the Board of Education charged the city for that. I mean, it just is, in, it's the, it's the um, height of simplicity to suggest that one entity isn't going to charge at least fair, fair market value for something, and it's totally unfair to um, those who are supporting the particular entity that's granting the benefit. Okay, to my major points, um, it's, um, now that we have some perspective, although apparently some don't yet, five weeks since the election, minus a day. Um, there's a couple things that keep being said that um, I think need clarification. So I have about five or six points. I'm gonna go through them quickly. First of all, uh, the election wasn't close. Oh, I know the vote count was close, but when you consider that those who were in favor of a tax increase outspent those who were opposed to a tax increase by a factor of eight to one, it was not close. In fact, if those who were um, opposed to a tax increase had spent as much, it would have been a significant 65 to 35 or something like that, like the vote a year ago. And on the, on the other hand, if those who were in favor of a tax increase spent as little as those opposed, it would have been similar. Secondly, this notion about Mr. Halverlack having an effect on the fact that the vote count was close. In fact, Mr. Halverlack exercised his right to communicate to a number of individuals his honest opinion about the proposals. It was in fact the mayor who responded by initially trying to censor Mr. Hallerlach, who brought extreme attention to Mr. Hallerlach's argument and outraged a significant number of individuals with respect to the tactic. I can't tell you how many people told me that they made their decision based on that uh, series of events. And the mayor brought it on, it just happens to be a fact. Uh, if there's any one person to blame for the close vote, whether you, you're happy about it or not, Point three, the overwhelming majority of residents want a library to operate. Now I know those who just cannot give it up, the fact that they lost, almost wish that a library not operate, which is incredible. But all you have to do is add those who voted for and against Proposition 1, and all of those voting yes or no want a library to operate. Four, the overwhelming majority want it to operate without an increase in taxes. All you have to do is go back to my first point spent, outspent eight to one, and yet still prevailed in terms of that perspective. Um, <clears throat> five, we can operate a library without an increase in taxes. We can look at capital expense, we can look at um, capital items, we can look at expense items, not just personnel, but certainly because it, it, it's a labor intensive kind of activity, we certainly would look at some issues of wages and benefits. I've always said my goal, if I had any, anything to do with it, would be to retain jobs 
by addressing those kinds of issues so we can maintain services. But we can't operate a library without an increase in taxes. Um, finally, the final point, and then I'll close, but the final point, this business about um, those who were in, opposed to a tax increase are causing an additional $90,000 expense for an election. It's absurd. Again, it's ignoring the facts. Council was in a position to adopt what uh, a majority of the residents wish without an election. So council would be making that decision about the increase. In closing, I know council members Howerlack, Fleming, and Beltramini have always looked at issues in an objective, comprehensive way with intelligence and wherever possible to um, achieve the interest of the majority of the residents of the city. Um, I have no hope in two to three of the others, but I'm hoping that we can get a majority of individuals to see the light, the appropriate thing, that what the residents want is to run a library, it can be done, it can be done without new taxes, and I think achieving that is something positive, not negative. Thanks. That concludes those that um, speak under public comment. We'll take response after the break. We'll take a break.
Um, there was a typo in um, the item E4, E4 on page four where uh, it said uh, Silk Road Global again, and it should have said P3 North America. And unless there's some objection from council, do we have consensus that we could just change that in the uh, resolution? Yeah, Anybody thing. objecting? No. Nope. Okay, thank you. Then we don't need to go back and re-vote on it. Okay, we're back at um, response to public comment. There were um, some questions that people asked and there were some statements. Um, so uh, I'm going to begin by uh, asking Mrs. Bloom to clarify why uh, council uh, in a six to one vote voted to ask you to go ahead for a clarification from the court because it was characterized otherwise by people of the audience. Um, thank you, Mayor, and, and I'm not gonna um, talk about all of the lawsuit, but I did want to just clarify a couple of the incorrect statements that were made. Um, this is not to allow city council to violate the charter. In fact, the lawsuit will allow for council to not violate the charter. That is the purpose of bringing the lawsuit so that there is not a charter violation. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that, that that was clear. It is to seek clarification. It is not a monetary damage lawsuit. It is to seek some guidance from the courts in uh, dealing with this petition that was brought to city council and city council will need to take action on otherwise. Thank you. Uh, council members, did you have uh, items that you wanted to respond to? Yeah. Anybody or questions? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. Madam Mayor, uh, one of, uh, there were questions about the Troy Historic Museum. I was hoping that staff might clarify some of those. Yes, about Thank why you. they're open uh, 10 to three during the week, et cetera. Yes. <coughs> uh, Mayor and City Council, the. Uh, the work plan for the museum was laid out in our 2010-11 budget, which called for a reduction in staff from two full-time people and nine part-time individuals to one full-time and one part-time person. The director has probably been put in more than 40 hours a week, working on getting grants, working with a historical society to take this to a level next year where they are not funded at all to get them so they are able to raise funds and put programs together so they could be operated on their own. To date, they have received a $40,000 Kresge grant and <coughs> the hours of operation are correct. They are geared towards the students because that is a revenue generator for the museum, one of their biggest uh, revenue generators. So that's why they're open during those hours. The other time is spent on working with a historical society, trying to obtain grants and other program planning when you have one person and one part-time person and even to do what they have to do right now is more work than uh, that would call for. Okay. Uh, Mayor Patem, Kerwin, do you have something else? Well, there was a narrative uh, that was coming from many of uh, uh, people no longer here now, I see, but members of Troy Citizen United and others who'd established a new narrative in which they characterize approval of the budget as a vote against the library. Um, I've sat here for th three years, I started my fourth year, and I was surprised uh, the first year in the budget workshops where we had, as required, because we set it on the calendar at our first meeting, all the budget sessions. And at the budget sessions, the budget would be presented for, for the years that I've served and workshop after workshop after workshop. And I remember being very surprised the night that the vote was taken at this public table uh, that it wasn't unanimous and, and that something was even brought up. And I did turn to um, my colleague, Council Member Beltramini, and express much surprise about, well, none of this was discussed during all of our multiple workshops. And she uh, informed me that this was the culture, this is the way it's been done. And there'll be lots of workshops where we think, where at least my expectation was, all of these things would be worked out or discussed or people would bring information, and then there would be 
a vote, and that vote wasn't unanimous. The next year, same thing. The next year, same thing. And I'd be curious to go back and see when the last time there was a unanimous vote on the budget. But the vote that came before us was not a close the library vote. It was a vote to approve the budget that had been talked about in this, in this series of workshops that we held and that had been posted long before. Now, this new narrative that Troy Citizens United, who came tonight in different form, decides to begin a drumbeat for is that there is a divided council suddenly and there are the for the library and there are against the library folks. And that's insane. There's not a doubt in my mind that the folks in this community value and want to have a library. But there is a huge fallacy if folks think that it doesn't take revenue to sustain it. And that's what we've said from the beginning. The library is not a revenue generator. That to sustain it will take additional revenue in the face of what we have. For 14 years, the operational millage has not gone up. For 14 years, we've been cutting to make ends meet. For every year that I have served, we've talked about sustainability and the weakness that we face. When the new economy came upon us, even after seeing canaries in the coal mine, we were ill-prepared. For those who say we refuse to be accountable, I answer that we are accountable. We are accountable to balance the budget as it is. We were presented with the option, option one, which we talked about, four months. That was the option that the budget was balanced on. That's the multi-year budget that we're looking at. For those who would like to see a library, it is 12 million. Find it. But there's been no plan that has come forward to find that money. And anyone uh, else or Mr. Zerlag? There were several things that uh, public comment that were brought up. Does anybody else want to say anything? Or? I restate about the same four or five points every Monday to save time. I'm going to pass unless City Council wants me to respond. Okay, thank you. Mayor. Uh, Councilman Howardock? Uh, just uh, wanted to make a comment that on page 36 of the uh, budget, you can actually see that there have been changes to the general operating mill levy um, since 2002. Um, but I, I wanted to respond to a question that Mr. Krent brought up, and that was a comment about something in my letter that was sent out in October about paying twice for the same library. Um, and I want to add the following information. One is that um, Community Media Network did a good job of, of archiving the, um, uh, I guess, the, the forum that was um, um, sponsored by the League of Women Voters, and I, and I watched that, and one of the things that was, was mentioned by one of the panelists was an increase in the um, operating costs for the library, and that was uh, mentioned and explained by this individual as um, something that um, they expected to um, absorb additional costs. Um, you can actually um, watch that uh, archive um, as well and see the same thing. There was a, um, Mr. Witt mentioned that the school district of the, of the Troy School District sold Troy High School to the, um, the city back in um, the 1990s. Um, and that, of course, was for a um, fairly significant amount of money, especially when you consider the asbestos issue at that school. It was in the millions. Uh, the library is on parkland. That issue had never been addressed. Whether or not there would be a conveyance of the property, whether the, there would be a, um, a lease of the facility, whether the um, 
the new um, independent library, even one at the library, none of those things have been discussed. I hadn't polled the library board because it didn't exist. I didn't poll council. And the Library Act simply, simply says that if it passed, you would have had the independent library with its initial board appointed by the city, city council with the right to levy up to what was asked for on the ballot. And there wasn't any uh, provision for how the library would come into being, how it would, um, how its books, et cetera, would come into being as well. That was the point of my letter, and I believe that with the duplicity of um, um, bureaucracy that would be created, that you would indeed be paying twice. I didn't say double, I said twice. And um, so th those were the, the points that I was making in that letter, and I just wanted to to respond to Mr. Krent, of course, um, if, if he would like, I, I would be more than willing to engage him in further discussion. I have a feeling at some point we're going to agree to disagree on some of these points, but I, I appreciate your politely bringing that up, and, and um, if you would like to discuss that further with me, I'm willing to do so. Anyone else? Madam Mayor. Uh, Councilman Beltsmini. There was a question about how long Beaumont is going to use our property to get to their facilities, and I did not use my time here to pull up that contract. I do know that we signed an easement and use agreement with them. How long is that going to carry on? Do we know? Can we look it up and have an answer by next week? Or Yeah, right next now. week? Right now. Carol knows. Does Mrs. Anderson know? Hmm? Okay. It was just, um, Mayor and City Council, the last agreement was just brought to you recent, or several months ago. I'm not sure, if, I know it was at least for a year. It's, um, they do utilize a part of the parking lot which is not used normally by the general public. They pay $15,000 a year for rental of that which goes towards any maintenance, whatever that may go towards that. Um, I know it's been probably three years or so that they've been using it. Um, as long as they need it, we're probably, and they're not hurting our um, use or parking and so forth, that we'll probably continue. It's $15,000 we receive for it. So we just pretty much automatically renew it as, as it necessary. Comes, it does come yeah. to city council so, whenever it needs to be renewed. Yeah. So they're under contract and it's going to be as long as they're under contract. So that would be the piece. The other thing I, I, I want to kind of make a statement here, Mayor, if I might. Yes. The library discussion has become a polarized discussion in and of itself, and it's become kind of an all or nothing discussion. And while I know the petitions say 55 hours, and I'd like to honor that, you all also know that I spent last week in Denver with the National League of Cities, and libraries were on a lot of people's agenda. Um, I, I learned that there are companies that you can contract to operate your libraries, and it meets all state requirements. Um, I learned that most communities are not closing their library. And I guess I, I say to staff, I, I think with this library discussion, we need to keep one, more than one ball in the air. We, we know the ICMA report is coming and we will base a comprehensive discussion on that. We know that if there is no further revenue stream found either from the city budget or some other source, the library will close its collection to borrowing on the 30th of April. And my concern is that I am not sure that it has to be an all or nothing situation. Can we run a subscription service? Can those residents that want access to our City of Troy collection that we have paid for, can we set up a separate entity to run this library so that we are not using tax dollars for it and those who want to use it can pay a membership fee. Can we make a business plan to do that, what it would take? And I know that we would give up interlibrary loan, we would give up state accreditation perhaps in doing that, but 
our st students would have a collection that, given the business plan, might even expand. They would have a place to study, a place to gather, a place to learn. Um, I also know that there are virtual entities. I also think that we need to make a stronger per push, particularly with the new legislature, on the library hours and other terms of accreditation. The rules were and started in the 70s. We do business much differently than in the 70s. In the 70s, you literally had to go to the library to check out a book, to renew a book, and don't even think about downloading a book. Now we do all those things. We should get credit for those things. We're a 24-7 operation. I, I think we need to do a little juggling here so that if we can find another way to do this, maybe we don't have to fully close the collection on the 30th of April. But if we don't start now juggling some of those balls, we will have no options. So I would encourage us to do that. And if that means that we have to engage our members, our, our citizens, to find out what they're willing to pay, what they're willing to do, <clears throat> there are online engagement tools, there are surveys. I'll, I'll be out there, I'll run a town hall, I don't care. And, and I would think that in all seven members of council want a library one way or another, so we'll, we'll put some elbow grease, we'll put some skin in that game. So let's juggle some balls and see what we can do about this. I, I'm tired of this being an all or nothing thing. I really am. And it's just further polarizing the community. Let's do something different. Thank you. Anyone else on uh, response to public comment? All right, uh, let's... Uh, Mayor, Mayor? Yes, just, Councilman uh, Slater. Just to my two cents. Um, I, I don't think it's fair to, uh, to speak about all these issues yet. Um, I, I'm looking forward to January when we're going to get an opportunity to look at the whole package all over again. And um, I'm hoping that everybody puts their due diligence and comes to that meeting with new ideas and new ways of doing business. Um, but to speak about that again today, um, I think we just need to wait. And uh, when we have all the data, we're gonna take another good look. And I resent the fact that somebody would stand up here today and insinuate that I voted to close the library because that is not what I did and I know that isn't what anybody up here did. And that is a tactic that I think needs to end to try and alienate this council four to three. I said it before, let's stop the tactics. We need to work together. So um, I look forward to January. The uh, report from the uh, ICMA will come on the 17th. We'll receive that. And then we're having a meeting on the uh, 24th. We're having the pre-meeting to uh, review uh, and if we want to do any revision on the um, budgets, uh, we're looking at uh, 12 and 11, 12 and 13, the, the budgets. Um, and so we, we're waiting for some information that's going to come in. I think it, it's um, really a shame that some members of our wonderful community have used the public comment section of the council meeting constantly to uh, try to divide the council uh, to, to say things uh, and uh, in, in some cases say things that are absolutely not true. Uh, for example, the uh, lawsuit that was filed was filed for clarification information that council is needed uh, before we make a decision. And the vote was six to one on that to ask for that clarification from the court. But you, you heard the speakers tonight make it look like it was something else that it wasn't. And so I, I think that that uh, needs to stop from the community. Uh, certainly this council, um, all of us, have the expertise and education and uh, backing of members of this community 
to solve uh, the issues that are here before us. And, and uh, we had an example last week of uh, coming up with our visions, goals, and things where we all had suggestions tonight. We're going to continue with that. And we're able to do that. And I think that if the, the public comment wasn't so divisive, it certainly would, would help and certainly would help all of us. So I'm hoping that people will take that public comment section for what it's worth. Mayor? Uh, Councilman Howardack? One, one thing, I, I just want to follow up on something that you said, and if I could just ask the city attorney a question, and it may be that I, I, I misunderstood how the, the procedure worked, but I wasn't aware that there would be a, um, an actual defendant. I thought it was going to be a, an in Ray lawsuit. Perhaps you could just explain that to me because I, I will admit some of the filings, and, and maybe it's because that's the way the courts are, but some of the filings just seemed a little ominous in their wording. Mrs. Bloom? Mayor, um, it was certainly, sure, it would have been nice if we could have just done an in Ray. That was not possible. There had to be a named defendant, especially because we were going forward. Mr. Kempen was the person who did turn in the signatures. He was the um, most, uh, the, um, the, the person who could easily be identified. I did in my research also find um, other examples of where they did name it against a specific individual. They're unpublished cases, but um, there was a Wayne County case in particular uh, involving the city of Detroit where they named the persons who turned in the petition as the defendant. I um, want to just follow up by um, thanking you for <coughs> forwarding the information to city council so that we're apprised of, of the situation as well. Um, and uh, if, Mayor, if I could just for another moment yes, um, follow up on something that Councilwoman Beltramini said, and, and um, I um, appreciate your comments. I, I um, am concerned that you know if we wait um, seven weeks before um, really taking proactive action, that uh, you know we're that much closer to that April 30th kind of drop dead closure date. And the final closure date of June 30th is seven weeks closer as well. And, you know, we, we, we may or may not uh, do something along the lines of what you've outlined, but I think there's a, the point there is that, you know, this is the time to brainstorm new ways of doing things. And even whether that be simply the way we, we um, account and finance for the, for the operations of the library. And so well, we, while we may still not have our discussion until January the 24th. I think that in these ensuing seven weeks or so, this is a, a good opportunity, as uh, Councilman Slater said, to do our, to do our homework and come prepared. Um, because if we can uh, use this opportunity as a council to unite at least on the issue of, of having some city-operated library, then um, at the end of the day, there can be um, some give and take and, um, on this issue as, as far as how it's accomplished so that we can indeed move on. Councilman McGinnis? I could just make one comment, um, and I know that the reason that we attend these types of conferences is uh, so that we can bring back information that we would not all be privy to because we all can't travel um, and we don't want to all attend a, the same conference. So um, I think it would be important rather than dump that kind of information onto our lap in addition to all the ICMA recommendations that we're going to be getting to review them, I would be interested in having that information disseminated beforehand so that we can review it. I think that all of us have the ability to um, seek out information and do our own investigation of certain issues. I don't know if it's at the point where we would be requesting city management to seek out anything formalized, but I think obviously, um, and I've thought this all along, that we're not the only community that's in this boat, whether it's the library or some other library or some other city service, um, I think that it would be doing our whole city a great disservice if we didn't work with other communities that are probably in, in that same brainstorming mode. So I would prefer that if we've got some of that information that you had access to as a result of attending the conference, if we could either have it disseminated or we could be pointed in the right direction so that we could all spend the time um, that we have before the January meeting to at least do a little bit more further investigation. So if at that point we would like the assistance of staff um, to 
take on additional responsibilities, we'll at least have had the information given to us rather than just discussed at the meeting here today. Further, anyone else? Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilman Beltme. My only point was that I, I can give staff all of this information and some of my own brainstorms, but to Councilman Harlech's question, if we start this discussion of alternative revenue sources on the 24th of January, and quite honestly and, and rightfully so, this council is not known for quick decision making. And that's important when you're making tough decisions. You don't want to make snap decisions. But we're allowing ourselves less than 12 weeks to get that job done. And when you're talking about new revenue streams and new operations, that's not much time. So that's why I, I warned you all that I was going to suggest to staff some of these alternatives so that balls could be kept in the air. That's all. Madam Mayor. Council, uh, Mayor Patem Kerwin. I think um, truly all of us do appreciate innovation. And we've been talking about innovation in all departments. And one of the things about the quality of life departments is the fact that they're not self-sustaining, yet each one has uh, been quick, I think, actually, to come up with innovative ways to streamline and to use volunteers very well including our library. Today we had a young uh, person speak before us talking about volunteers. Each of the volunteers at the library beyond the students have had background checks and, and uh, are, are in force more than I've ever seen them before. You can say the same thing for the Historic Museum and the same thing for the Nature Center. Volunteers are engaged and doing important work. Uh, your comments are interesting, uh, uh, Councilmember Beltramini. Again, I know you just got back and you haven't uh, probably had an opportunity to write up your notes as you are wont to do normally, and we look forward to seeing that. Uh, it's true that perhaps where you were, you saw that uh, these innovative methods for library services uh, met state and federal guidelines. We'd like to see that, particularly as it applies uh, here within the state of Michigan because we know we have been hamstringed somewhat uh, with the hours required and um, a difficulty in regionalizing and forming partnerships. So while those, those probably, uh, obviously you say they worked well in one place, we'd wanna make sure that we would uh, be able to have some more flexibility. And as you point out, whether that's working with a state librarian as we've suggested for uh, quite some time now, and our, uh, now we have a newly elected uh, legislation, uh, legislature, excuse me. Uh, so we'll, we'll want to work with those electeds. But I do agree with uh, Council Member uh, McGinnis that uh, we're not the only um, library experiencing the kinds of difficulties that we're facing right now. What we all realize is that uh, for all of our quality, quality of life services that it's coming down to revenue. Uh, so the revenue stream is going to be a constant. We're not going to be able to cut our way year after year. There was mention even of uh, the top 20. If you just took so much out of the top 20, we could let go all of the top 20 and not be able to continue the library services. So uh, we are doing what we can. Everyone has sacrificed and uh, we'll continue to do so as we go forward during these tough economic times. Um my concern in all this discussion, focusing just on the library, is that uh, I've always tried to focus on the total services that the city provides in looking at the budget and uh, looking at the impact that doing something and not doing something else would impact that total budget. So I'm hopeful when we have the discussions and we talk about the budget that we're gonna look at it with that perspective. And that was the perspective that we did when uh, we approve the, um, the budget and the rolling budget for the next few years. My concern is, again, that the figures that we keep getting in uh, from the county and the state, that there's going to be less money coming in uh, even that was projected when we set the budget before. So we need to be cognizant of that. Uh, and even though our heart tells us we'd like to be able to save everything, uh, 
our mind needs to tell us that we need to look at, yes, look at innovative ways to do things, and we are looking at different ways and joining with other communities. In fact, tonight we have some good news about joining other communities that want us to do our, uh, have our people do the fleet service because we do it so well. Uh, but again, I want to look at the total budget and the impact. That's why I'm looking forward to getting the report from ICMA to look at everything and make those kinds of decisions. Um, the next item that we have on here is for a request for closed session. Uh, okay. Mayor? Yes, Co Councilman Howard I? I'll, uh, I'll move the resolution, be it resolved that the Troy City Council shall meet in closed session Raquel Chidiak versus City of Troy et al. as permitted by MCL 15-268E pending litigation. Support. Moved by Councilman Hauerlach, supported by Councilman Slater, that we approve the resolution as printed and read. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilmember Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Hauerlach? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, the I-4 cancellation of the December uh, 20th regular City Council meeting. Madam Mayor. Councilman McGinnis. Hereby resolve that the Troy City Council hereby cancels the regular City Council meeting of December 20th, 2010. Do we have a support? I'll support it. Uh, moved by Councilman McGinnis, uh, seconded by, uh, by the Mayor. Um, discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, Councilman Howard I? I guess I'm kind of ambivalent on it. Um, the, um, the only concern that I have, and um, I should say the primary concern that I have, is the um, kind of the on again, off again schedule that we appear to be developing. And I think there was a meeting canceled in. October or September, and now there's a meeting that's going to be canceled in December. And of course, we've added meetings and added other meetings. I think there does at some point need to be some consistency. Um, there may very well may not be enough uh, business to warrant a third meeting in December, and that, that's what makes me ambivalent. But I do want us to hopefully develop some consistency with when we will or will not have council meetings. Further discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, I-5 is the 2010-11 uh, budget document, um, a budget amendment number one. Madam Mayor? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Resolved that Troy City Council hereby approves the 2010-11 budget amendment number one as submitted, a copy of which shall be attached to the original meetings of this minutes of this meeting. Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, seconded by Councilwoman Beltramini, that we approve the resolution as printed and read. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Motion passes. I-6 is the bid waiver Michigan Cat Mini Excavator. Madam Mayor? Um, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Whereas Michigan Cat of Shelby Township has been providing for the rental of a Cat 304 CCR for the last seven months to complete our manhole rebuilding project in the southeastern Oakland County Sanitary Sewer District, whereas it is desirable to continue to use the mini excavator to complete other rehabilitation projects in the Section 35 Water Main Replacement Project and the Evergreen Farmington Sanitary Sewerage District, and whereas due to the excavator's ease of use and being less intrusive to the surrounding area, the time frame to retap a resident's water service is shortened. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Troy City Council hereby deems it to be in the city's best interest to waive formal bidding procedures and authorize the purchase of a CAT 304 CCR mini excavator 
from Michigan Cat of Shelby Township for an estimated total cost of $46,303.88, which includes a discount of $12,775 for rental payments made to date. Do we have a second? Second. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, seconded by Councilman Beltramini, that we approve mm -hmm. the resolution as printed and read. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilman Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howard Yes. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, for the next item, I-7, it's an agreement to provide fleet maintenance services for the cities of Rochester and Oak Park. I'm going to call on Mr. Zerlag, uh, who I, wants to make an introduction of a... Yes, I'd like to introduce yes. the city manager for the city of Rochester, Mr. James Betrano. And uh, James is a, a very forward-thinking city manager. Uh, we all realize that one of the elements for sustainability is consolidation with other municipalities to achieve an economy of scale to deliver high quality services. In fact, it's our favorite option that we have out of this slate. And tonight you had before you an agreement to provide fleet maintenance services for both the cities of Rochester and Oak Park. James. Welcome, sir. Uh, we appreciate having you come and we appreciate you wanting Troy to provide fleet maintenance service. I think Thank our the reputation of the fleet maintenance individuals speaks for itself. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And the, uh, we recently had a tour of the, your fleet maintenance uh, services. Uh, the, our police chief, uh, myself, as well as our director of public works, and we were very impressed by the fishing operation that we witnessed down at the fleet services. Uh, we primarily intend to utilize the service agreement for our police vehicles, uh, both access to 24-7 availability and pulling those cars off the streets also, also is a risk to the city at any time, so having a place to take them and, and an entity that understands the importance of getting those vehicles back on the road. Uh, we think both will be economically benefit for the city of Rochester versus what we're paying for now uh, through private, gar uh, private garages and contracts, uh, as well as uh, having the cooperative relationship with the city of Troy. Uh, we certainly look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate you being here this evening. Anything else, Mr. Zerlay? Yes. Just want to mention that uh, now with the clients that we have, we insource about four hundred thousand dollars worth of work uh, on our on other municipalities' vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's going to the point where if we insource any more, uh, Sam Lamarado is probably going to ask for another uh, mechanic, and that's okay with us. It's great news. Well, thank you. Uh, we have uh, two agreements here, one for uh, the City of Rochester and one for the City of Oak Park. So if we could have a um, resolution that includes A and B. Someone want to move those? Councilman Baltimini? Yeah. Right. Resolved, I would move both A and B saying, resolved that the Troy City Council hereby approves the interlocal service agreement for the City of Troy to provide fleet maintenance services to the City of Rochester, and be it further resolved that the Troy City Council hereby authorizes the City Clerk and Mayor to execute the agreement, a copy of which shall be attached to the original minutes of this meeting. Also, I resolve that the Troy City Council hereby approves the interlocal service agreement for the City of Troy to provide fleet maintenance services to the City of Oak Park and be it further resolved that the Troy City Council hereby authorizes the City Clerk and Mayor to execute the agreement, a copy of which shall be attached to the original minutes of this meeting. Support. Moved by Councilman Beltamini, seconded by Councilman Fleming, that we approve resolutions A and B. Mrs. Bartholomew, that's okay that we do one vote with A and B, right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilman Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. The motion passes. Uh, the consent agenda. Does council have any items they want to have um, exempted? Mayor? Councilman Howerlack? That would be J4C and J4D. Any others? Okay, could we have a resolution that includes all items except J4C and J4D? Mayor. Councilman Howerlack? 
resolved that the Troy City Council hereby approves all items on the consent agenda as presented with the exception of items J4C J4, and J4D, which shall be considered after consent agenda items as printed. Good work. Moved by Councilman Hauerlach, seconded by Councilman Fleming that we approve all the consent agenda items with this vote except J4C and J4D that'll be considered for after the vote. Mayor? Uh, Councilman Hauerlach? Uh, not, not a major issue, but this is why I got I stopped for a second reading the resolution, but I just noticed that we're, we're using I items in the resolution in the title, so we might want to sure. change that in the future. Yes, thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Bartholomew, the vote. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilman Beltramini? Yes. Uh, Councilman Hollack, you asked, oh, motion passes. Uh, you asked for J4, C, and D? Um, yes, Mayor, if we could take them individually, I would appreciate okay. that. Yes, J4, C? My comment on J4, C is I simply wanted the opportunity to vote against it. As, as you folks know that, well, you may know that um, I have um, at this point not reach the, the level of comfort with um, the use of tasers in police forces, which is, um, it, it's still a rather controversial thing. I think that with that, um, um, the chief and I may, may very well, um, in, in meeting may very well eventually change my mind, but at this point I'm just not at that comfort level, and um, that, that's all. I wanted to uh, pull that out. All right. Uh, would someone else like to move J4C then? Mayor. Mayor. Councilman Sl Slater. Go ahead. You do it. You know about Councilman things. Slater. Go ahead, and then I'll give her the second. Um, resolved that the Troy City Council hereby authorizes the Troy Police Department to receive a Michigan Municipal Risk Management Authority. MMRMA Risk Avoidance Program RAP grant and expand, expend the funds for the purchase of taser equipment from the sole source provider, Michigan Taser Distributing, for an estimated total cost of $41,483.37 and be it further resolved that the Troy City Council hereby amends the police department budget to receive the grant funding equal to 50% of the cost of 30 tasers and a training suit estimated at $12,212.50. Second. Moved by Councilman Slater, seconded by Councilman Beltamini that we approve the resolution as printed and read. Further discussion? Mayor. Mayor. Uh, Councilman Slater? I, I know I probably can't uh, persuade Councilman Harlech's uh, opinion, but as a person that has seen this work, I, I am a strong proponent of this use of force as opposed to other avenues that would have to be used. Mm -hmm. That's what convinces me also um, is that, that this use of this equipment uh, enables uh, officers to, to um, provide the service that they need to uh, without using um, other equipment. And I know that there's, it's still, uh, in some people's minds, still equipment that, that they're not fully supporting at the, this point. But I'm hopeful that um, that will change. Madam Mayor. Uh, yes. I'm also grateful for the grant and the fact that the, the police looks for ways. And um, I think that uh, uh, in reading the background material about using opposite hands and the weaker hand or the less used hand uh, for training, I think is important as well. So it'll keep well away from, from each. So um, uh, I think this is a good worthwhile expenditure and important training uh, that we should, we should do. I will be supporting it with a yes vote. Mrs. Bartholomew, the vote. Council Member Hauerlach? No. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. 
Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Uh, J4D, Councilman Hauerlach, you asked for this one? Yes, Mayor, uh, just a quick question. Um, with our previous contract, what, uh, what were we paying if I could ask management? Do you know, Mark? Not offhand. The, the I know annual Tim was, cost? Tim was back. I'm surprised he's not out yet. The annual cost, Councilman Harlack? Well, I was just curious what the per vehicle cost was well, on this vehicle? new uh, um, on this new award compared to what we uh, were paying prior to uh, I think it was December 1st of this year, I guess. I know we get a special price for volume. Um, if Tim's not in, would you want us to supply that information next week? Did you need it tonight before the vote? Well, you know, um, I mean, I, I guess this is reasonable. My, my, my concern was just that, I, um, and, and perhaps somebody can answer this, is um, in reading the memo, it mentioned that five companies received calls directly. Does that mean that we contacted them asking them to bid and they didn't want to? Again, I'd have to defer to the author of this letter. Oh, as a matter of fact, I'll defer to Mr. Richnack, who's walking up to the oh, microphone. Oh, there he is. We'll be able to answer all of your questions. Thank you. Uh, actually, we do not have that information here this evening. I tried to give a call to Sam uh, Lamarado. Uh, he didn't answer uh, as far as the, the previous cost. Uh, and as far as uh, calling the other vendors, yes, we were looking for uh, making sure that they uh, were aware of the bid going out and the information, and uh, as far as we know, they just didn't wish to bid. I, I was just surprised. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of competition in that business, and we only got one bid. And I think that, you know, part of that uh, situation we had uh, contractors before, or contracts before, with one vendor and a backup vendor, and I, uh, I have the feeling, uh, based on some conversation that Sam and I had a while ago, that. Uh, what happened when we have five vendors out there that it, it diluted some of their revenue and, and they were expecting more of that batch and, and that we feel is a contribution to why some of them didn't bid. Thank you. Mayor. Thank you. Mayor. Yes, Councilman Slater. I, I have a recollection a couple, three years ago of it being $3.75 um, and I think it would probably have been close to that. Uh, so I think maybe it's up 30 cents, something like that. 10 percent, yeah. That. Okay. Does someone want to move this resolution? Mayor, I will. Um, Councilman Harlack. Mayor, I will move the resolution to um, um, award the um, sole award bidder vehicle wash services as printed on the agenda. Support. Moved by Councilman Harlack, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, that we approve the resolution as printed. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilmember Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerleck? Yes. Motion passes. Um, memorandums and future council agendas come before council comments. I want to comment about the uh, memo that's in the um, agenda and that will come to us at another time about the uh, Elotero Solar House. At this point, um, I think that it is important for, um, when the original agreement came forward and, and we were accepting the house to be on city property, it was assumed that the house would be, uh, was built to the standards that it could sustain itself. That's what it was sold as. Uh, we found out that it isn't. Uh, therefore, I think it's incumbent upon the folks at um, Lawrence Tech to take care of the matter rather than having us accept the responsibility of it. Uh, on our property. I don't know how the others feel about it, but that's my feeling about it. Mm. We'd welcome a comment. If anyone else wants to comment, it's going to come as a, a, a 
a council regular, item at the next meeting? I believe so. Uh, Mr. Miller, I believe, has spoken to uh, uh, Lawrence Tech on this matter as well. Mark, is that correct? Yes. Any Do they update? have a reaction? No, no reaction at this time. Okay. They probably want us to pay for everything, but Mayor. yes. Uh, Councilman Sider? I think there was a comment tonight that uh, somebody talked to, to them and said that they had sold it to Troy. There's no truth to that. Does I have to I have this I have to defer to Mr. Uh, Miller or Mr. Lamarado on this matter. I assume there's no truth to that. No, there's no truth to that. that we have had uh, uh, an agreement. I'm having trouble hearing that. I don't oh, know I'm if sorry. it's the mic. Well, the, the... There has been a draft agreement, and you have not accepted ownership of it as right. city council at okay. this time. Okay. Mayor. Yes, Councilman Howard. I, I think I think staff did an excellent job in laying out the problems and the solutions, and mm -hmm. I think that. Um, I completely agree with those three options that they they drafted. I agree. Anybody else? Okay. Agree. All right. Um, next, we have council comments on any other items that aren't agenda, or maybe they are. Uh, who was uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? There has been a call for blood. Um, uh, Troy. Uh, that Troy. was under public comment, wasn't it? <laughs> Ah, no, I didn't mean it that way. Yes, I do. We do feel like uh, yeah, we're bleeding up here. No, um, I wanted to let the community know uh, of our uh, community center uh, uh, blood drive. And Troy has always done a really nice job with the blood drive, and many of us uh, give blood. I want you to know that it's December 29th and the 30th, and you may uh, call Community Affairs to make an appointment, uh, 248-524. 1147. Um, they will uh, uh, be uh, taking blood from 9 to 3. The call for blood is very serious, particularly at the end of the year. Um, there are many folks on the roads. Uh, we know that there are rarer uh, blood types and uh, platelets are always um, in need, but every single um, type of blood, even mine, which is kind of a boring blood type uh, is, is in need. So please call Community Affairs, join us, um, give blood. For those of us who gave up blood up here tonight, uh, we'll also see you over there uh, December 29th and 30th. Um, and then I know many of us will also uh, be here Wednesday, December 8th, but we'll be uh, covered up with lots of clothes <laughs> because that is the Christmas tree lighting ceremony uh, in front of City Hall caroling uh, by Athens High School Qu uh, Choir. They do a beautiful job. We have holiday sing-along. Suites are provided by Troy School PTOs, the Troy Optimist Club, and Kosh uh, Catering. And uh, remember, uh, Santa will join us and turn on the lights and um, also listen to some special wishes. And uh, Santa Claus, uh, you can't miss Santa. Mm -hmm. So I urge everybody to come December 8th, 7 p.m. Anybody else? Your Honor? We had an item on the table from the Liquor Control Commission. Uh, it's one of those mm -hmm. silences concurrence letters if you don't take any action uh, prohibiting uh, the sale of alcohol on Sundays between 7 a.m. and 2 a.m. on Monday. That's going to happen. Do you have any, do you want to make this an agenda item or how do you want to handle this? You must decide by December uh, 16th, oh. 15th. Do we have to have a resolution? Well, if you, if you do nothing, sales are going to be allowed on Sundays. Okay. Councilman Beltrini. Question for the city attorney. If we do nothing, nothing, um, what opportunity, we will review a liquor license that asks for Sunday sales, or how is that going to work? Well, uh, Madam Mayor. Well, um, it has not been determined, and I read this letter um, today as well from the Liquor Control Commission, and according to this letter, it appears that the MLCC may just do the processing of the um, earlier hours on Sunday on their own, and, and it wouldn't come to City Council. Um, as long as there is a Sunday license. There, there are some communities that don't have any Sunday licenses at all. They've taken affirmative action to preclude Sunday um, alcohol sales. Since the city of Troy has not done that, 
it is possible that MLCC will just take this action and will process these applications without it coming before council. Can can MLCC expand a non-Sunday license to Sunday if we take no action? Is is that your interpretation that they could if there's if there's an existing class C license that does not yet have Sunday sales, they can approve that administratively in Lansing. If it has Sunday sales, then it can expand the Sunday sales hours. I don't, um, it, it's not true conversely that if they do not have Sunday sales that they could take that action to expand it to Sunday sales to the earlier hours. So those actions would come to us. And, and I would also just indicate that this legislation when drafted is a little ambiguous and, and um, so it's, it's going to create some other issues. I don't know how they're going to process it. I know that there's a lot of scrambling right now to figure out how to implement it. I'm fine doing nothing. I, I think that we should just let them handle I mean, these are folks that already have a Sunday license. It's just expanding that hours. Uh, I need to ask a question on the study item. I know that it was added on, uh, but there's a resolution and we can't have a vote when we're in the study session. So uh, I don't know how other council members feel, but since reading all the data and everything, I, I'd like to have the resolution voted on here. And then if people have questions, they could ask maybe in the, in the study session further. You Mr. Zerling? I spoke with our, uh, our crack parliamentarian, uh, our city clerk, Tony Bartholomew, and asked that precise question, and that being, can city council have the study item and then subsequently pass a resolution? And the answer is yes. There's nothing in your rules that prohibit you from having a study session and advancing a resolution. But if you want to have a resolution in lieu, you know, and then talk about it, whatever you want to do is, is up to you. Okay. Uh, my reason in wanting to have a resolution here is that I think there was enough information provided uh, and people had a chance to think about it. I'd like us to spend our time in the study session working on the vision and goals and not go over all of the slides. I mean, I know you put in work on getting it prepared for us, but I think we all, at least I feel, have already studied it enough. I don't know how others feel. Madam Mayor. Uh, Councilman Beltramini. Back to my experiences of last week. I don't disagree with you that I, I have no problem with this resolution. However, back to last week, the one thing that was pervasive throughout the conference, cities do not do a good job of telling the public how and why they provide a given level of service. And for us to not use this opportunity to educate our public on what our options are and why we chose a middle of the road option, I think is an opportunity of building community that we would be foregoing. And so I absolutely believe that that presentation needs to be made to us tonight. If you do it before or after this resolution, I don't care. But for 10 minutes of my time to create an educated citizenry I will spend that time. That's fine. Madam Mayor. Yes. Uh, Councilman Kerwin. My preference. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. My preference would be to go into the um, study session to hear the information, to share it, have a dialogue, and then uh, call for a resolution. That's fine. All right. So we, because we can vote in, in the study session, then we'll wait uh, to do it in there. Okay. So uh, no other item? in here we'll be in <clears throat> recess and get together again in the other room
for our study session. We're going to start with the snow, ice and snow control policy. Mr. Zerlay. Thank you, Your Honor and members of council. What brought this to a head is that beginning next year in our three-year budget, the city of Troy is no longer going to uh, take care of the county roads in, ter in terms of snow and ice control uh, in the city of Troy because we have a history of subsidizing the county to reach our high standard of, of, of service, which essentially is having bare pavement within 24 hours after a four-inch snowfall. And uh, one of the reasons that we're not going to be able to take care of the county roads is that we're going to be laying off, unfortunately, 10 people in the, in the Christian Drake Department of Public Works. This year, we have a contract with RCOC, the Road Commission for Oakland County, for all of their county roads, and those roads consist of Adams Road, Big Beaver, Crooks, Quinder, John R., Rivernoy, Long Lake, Maple, and South Boulevard. The other about 250 miles of roads are maintained by the City of Troy. Most of those roads are local roads, and we budgeted about $250,000. That is a revenue from the county to take care of their roads. So we were faced with a number of options, which means essentially that you're faced with a number of options. Uh, the first is that we can maintain our high level of service until the Oakland County money runs out and then go to a lower level of service that Oakland County has and still maintain a high level of service for Troy. That didn't seem to make much sense because in the example in the cover letter, uh, Tim and his troops would be on Rochester Road. Uh, Big Beaver gets about 66,000 cars a day. They would lift their plow up and not plow Big Beaver Road. Over to Dominic Street, that gets about 150 cars a day and plow Dominic Street. We'd get killed for a policy like that. So. We essentially uh, recommend a middle-of-the-road uh, policy to be better than the county's level, but not as good as our level, right from the get-go. We think that will save money and also be safer in the long run in terms of response time. And Mr. Richnack will explain in detail why we're making this recommendation. Okay. Um, on this slide, if you look here where uh, City of Troy and the funding control why there's a slope there is because and we can't say exactly when we would spend that money, but in the past uh, nine years, sometime between January 15th and February 20th, we've always come to that point. So that's an illustration of that. Uh, this table of level of service, if you look down the left-hand column, uh, City of Troy Historical Level of Service, Basically, we have one road segment that's approximately six miles long uh, per truck, and we have a bare pavement. We treated our uh, local roads for the hills, curves, and intersections, which we did today after last night's storm. Uh, and then we go to a plowing operation if we have over four inches of snow. Uh, beyond that, if there's emergency service requested by our police department, we will go up onto I-75. I'm going to slide over to the Road Commission of Oakland County level of service, all the way to the right. They tell us that it's going to be three road segments, so 18 plus miles of road for every truck that they would provide. They would have bare wheel tracks to a quarter inch of slush in them, no bare pavement. Our local road, hills, curves, and intersections won't change with the exception that it's going to be delayed by whatever it takes us to get off the county roads if we're going to only have one truck for three road segments. So that'll extend that time. And each of those road segments takes between 30 and 45 minutes to traverse and to load the truck up with what's needed to solve those road segments. And as you go down uh, 72 hours plus before we anticipate uh, you'd be able to clear all those roads, that was 